All right, how's everyone doing? Welcome to From Z to A, Alphabetical Interviews with Zach Anderson. I am Zach Anderson. Today we are here at White House Productions in Shelton for the 10th edition of Monsters of Acoustic Rock, and I am joined by The Forest Room, or Matt from The Forest Room. Yes. Who is also The Forest Room. Yes. <laughs> so thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, no problem. And uh, so I'm going to ask you the difficult questions as long as they have something to do with the letters of your name. Okay. Uh, so we're going to start off with F. Um, tell me about your first gig. Uh, where was it? Um, do you have any... Uh, particular memories from that my show? first gig with the forest room or first gig ever? Uh, let's go with uh, the forest room. Um, I think uh, it was about five years ago or so. I played at uh, RJ Julia's in, in Madison or Clinton. It's like a bookstore, mm -hmm. coffee shop, and my music was a bit more tame then. I kind of I sat down, um, and I didn't wasn't as much into the looping then. But uh, I think I responded to a Craigslist ad. They were looking for. Acoustic artist, right. and that was the first time. Yeah. Nice. Um, now, tell me, how do you uh, go about choosing a setlist order? Do you uh, do you meticulously pick over what songs to play, or does it? Uh, uh, do you end up tend to like just uh, wing it, uh, decide on stage? Uh, I do have a particular order or method. Um, since I do looping, and I have my drum loops and drum beats on a looper pedal, they're numbered in banks, okay. so. Um, I have to have like a, a diagram of my banks and my tunings and songs and right, right. are pretty big and obvious. So um, generally, everything's in already in an order, and then I kind of go up and down and choose what I want to play. But um, I usually try to keep, um, I guess, sets. I don't know, could range anywhere between like thirty to forty minutes. Um, mm -hmm. I could play a lot longer if I wanted to, but uh, I generally like to keep like kind of energetic in the beginning and then kind of chill out in the middle and then end up energetic again, so, yes. Nice. Uh, do you have any uh, pre-show rituals, things you need to do to get ready before a show? Uh, sort of, yeah, I, I do stretch a lot. I stretch my my hands and my forearms. Um, I drink a lot of water. Uh, I do these, like, breathing exercises, and do, <laughs> I do get kind of nervous, even though in other brands I don't get nervous. Huh. But, yeah. <laughs> um, Tell me, uh, give me an example of uh, an embarrassing moment you've had on stage. Um, two really stand out. Um, breaking a string on stage is no right. fun. That, <laughs> that sucks. Um, I learned a lesson that you have to have a backup guitar with you, even even if it's in your car, bring it with you. Or even if you had it at home, there was a time where I only had one guitar, mm. and, uh, and that was like difficult when I broke a string. I had to change the string on stage, and it was kind of, I'm pretty quick, I'm very quick with that. Um, but it took a while. And then another time was, um, since I'm doing a looping on the drum beans, there was a time where my, my looper pedal was just being weird. It would just cut out and do a loud, high-pitched squealing noise, like mid-song, and it just was a real bummer. And uh, it, it creates an anxiety with you. You know, it's like, oh, is this going to happen again? And that's what happened. Um, so, but you got to, you know, being professional, you got to act like it didn't happen, stop it quick, move on to the mm -hmm. next thing. Right. And then um, what I ended up doing was I took my pedal apart and, I replaced switches and replaced a power supply and a memory card, and then it's been fine since. But that was like a year or two ago when that was happening, yeah. and I was almost anxious to, or hesitant to book shows because, like, if this happens more, it's going to be more. <laughs> right, right. It happened a handful of times, but it's cool oh, now. Excellent. <laughs> Good. Uh, uh, tell me about your songwriting process. Uh, do you uh, start with a riff or a beat, or uh, how do you go about it? Um, usually, um, all my beats are kind of made. And drum loops are made kind of differently. Um, some I made with Reason, Propeller Head, Propeller Head Reason. Um, some I you get from a free looping site. Um, some I bought a drum pack for you know plugins and stuff like that and produce mm -hmm. stuff. Um, I have a beat that I sampled from a Kids in the Hall skit. Awesome. <laughs> so like I just grabbed it from the episode um, and I, I edited, of course, to get you know background right, sounds right. out. But um, and I also um, I built a beat or two with an app on my iPhone. Okay. So, um, but I usually have like, it's usually, um, so I have like a riff or a beat and I'll start just jamming on it. You know, usually it's like a weekend late at night and I'm just jamming on it and then uh, I take video of it mm -hmm. and uh, I usually get like a good take of something within the first like one to three takes and then I just, it's like, oh, that sounded good and then I put it on my YouTube channel and then after that I sort of listen to the song and watch the video a lot and kind of learn it again. Mm -hmm. And so that it's consistent for all my shows. So, um, but yeah, like, uh, it's kind of just jamming out 
and uh, I'm constructing layers and breaking them down differently and each song is kind of built a little differently but it's usually just a, like a, a late at night thing um, right. again, when I have free time. Cool. Uh, now how does one or how do you go about uh, choosing song titles for instrumental pieces? Usually they just have something weird to do that was going on at the time when I wrote it. Um, I was actually discussing this with a friend today, like, uh, I have a song called Rumsfield. I watched The Burbs and was laughing about The Burbs all weekend, so like, I called that song Rumsfield, because that's a character that would be. Um, I have a song that's called A Gentle Breeze, and I go hiking a lot. Um, I'm pretty, like, I exercise a lot and go hiking a lot. Um, and there's a few spots in the trails I go where I think it's just because there's so many rocks around you, it's cooler, but as soon as you get there, it just it's just a gentle breeze. It's just cooling and refreshing, and <laughs> so that's what that's about. And um, so yeah, just generally with something going on with the day. Um, obviously, I have no lyrics. I'm too busy tap dancing on my pedals <laughs> to try that yet. So right. who knows? Maybe someday. All right, cool. Um, so I like to end all my interviews with uh, three interesting or random facts about yourself that many people might not know. Um, my main band. Main, my main music outlet, I would say, is my I play bass and yell in a sludge metal band uh -huh. called Burrows. Digburrows.com. Check it out, just free Check music. Um, another thing is, uh, I built my light, my stage lighting, and I built my pedal board, and I built a lot of the pedals I use. Mm -hmm. I built them myself. Um, I had like a side business doing guitar setups and building pedals and repairs, um, and also uh, I eat tacos a lot. I go to Taqueria Mexico mm -hmm. and for probably one to three times a week because it's it's awesome and there. I have certain dietary needs mm -hmm. and eating there doesn't bother my stomach so there you go. I eat tacos, I want a lot of tacos every week. Soft or hard? Soft. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Very cool. Alright, well thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. Uh, if you'd like to check out The Forest Room, please visit the link below and now we will cut to a performance from The Forest Room. So uh, thanks again we'll see you next time.
So you can check me out on YouTube. Um, all these songs are written all around my YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash theforest.